Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Smash JT. In this episode, I'm going to be doing the top 10 hardest games for the original Nintendo. This list was really hard to make because everyone knows the term NES hard was made because of the original Nintendo. Three, find your happy place. And I went through a whole bunch of games on the original NES to get these 10. So let's do this. Let's do this! Now a quick note for the games on this list, I had to include only the games that were good and that were beatable. So a good game that's impossible like the Gauntlet series, not going to make the list. Or a terrible game like Silver Surfer that's nearly impossible to beat is not on the list either. And just a quick editor's note for this video, Ninja Gaiden 1 and Ninja Gaiden 2 are not on this list because while extremely challenging, you have infinite continues in that game and they are manageable to beat. Unlike Ninja Gaiden 3, however, which is just impossible because you have a limited amount of continues, it's actually too hard and not that fun. So I didn't put that on the list for that reason. Similar to games like Bart vs. the Space Mutants. Fun game, but a lot of the challenge comes from the broken controls in it, and I don't feel like that's a fair challenge if it's broken controls, so I'm not counting games like that on this list either. So with that in mind, let's get to the list. For number 10 on my list, I'm going with the original Paperboy. This game was insanely hard for the original Nintendo, and if you haven't played this, prepare yourself for obstacles literally everywhere. Anything and everything will jump out of the bushes to kill you. It's a lot of fun, but I don't think I ever made it past Wednesday. Paperboy is a 1985 arcade game originally developed and published by Atari Games and then ported to the NES console. The player takes the role of Paperboy who delivers a fictional newspaper called The Daily Sun along a suburban street on his bicycle. The game is extremely vicious with its courses and challenges along the way, and I don't know anyone that's been able to get through an entire week in this game. For number 9 on my list, it's pretty much the entire Mega Man series for the NES, but if I had to pick one, I'd go with the original, because there are no energy tanks, no password systems, it's one playthrough the whole way through, and without using the pause trick on the yellow devil at Dr. Wily's castle, prepare yourself for a lot of repetition and pattern memorization, because it is really, really hard. Pretty much everyone already knows Mega Man's one of the hardest games on the NES, but what you may not know is the legacy behind the cover art of Mega Man. Capcom's sales department originally believed the game would not sell, but after Japan had received limited quantities, it was successful enough to quickly commission an American localization. As part of the rushed localization, the president of Capcom USA told the marketing representative to have the cover done by the next day. So he had a friend draw it in about six hours. And they believe that this is what caused the game to initially sell poorly in the United States. The artwork for the cover of this game is well known for being one of the worst covers of all time. Alright, we're down to number 8 on my list, and remember, this is my list of games, and your list of hard NES games probably vary greatly from this. And with that in mind, number 8 is Fester's Quest. Now I know I said at the beginning, only good games make this list, and I love the original Fester's Quest, even though I love it, it's a really challenging game. So if you haven't tried Fester's Quest, give it a shot, it's number 8 on my all-time hardest NES games. Fester's Quest is one of those interesting titles that you either love it or hate it. It received mixed reviews, receiving a 56% from Computer and Video Games Magazine. Games Radar ranked it the 73rd worst game ever made. The staff criticized its excessive difficulty levels and lack of comicality. But then you have the other side of things where IGN ranked Fester's Quest 45th on its top 100 NES games list. And Fester's Quest sold 1 million copies, so just depends if you love it or hate it. And for number 7 on my list, I'm going with one of my favorite NES games, Karnov. This game was absolutely brutal to play. You got two hits and you died. The levels were extremely challenging and there were enemies literally everywhere. It's a lot of fun to play, but my god, Karnov was hard. Originally released in the arcades in 1987, Data East ported the game to the NES in 1988 with a few differences from the arcade. Instead of one hit, the NES version you can get two hits before you die, the Super Fireball replaced the Spike Bomb, and level 4 and level 8 are completely different from the arcade levels. 
And even though the NES version of this game has unlimited continues, I still had a hell of a time getting through some of these levels. And to this day, I love this game even though I still have never beaten it. Number six is going to be a little bit controversial because a lot of people can't stand this game. The original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES is extremely challenging, but it's a ton of fun to play. Except for those jumps that are nearly impossible to make. It does have a lot of redeeming qualities to it. You get to play as all four Ninja Turtles, and they all have their different weapons with different lengths and abilities that they can use. But once one of your turtles was killed or captured, it was almost impossible to rescue them. You'd nearly kill yourself with another turtle trying to rescue one of the other ones that was already dead. It was so hard. This is another one of those love it or hate it kind of games. Originally released in 1989, the NES version was a major success with over 4 million copies sold. It was one of the best selling third party NES games of all time, and a series of computer ports were developed and rushed out for that year's Christmas season. This was during the major Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mayhem that was going on back then. Ironically, this game was the game of the year for the Nintendo Power Magazine in 1989, but then later reviews of the game now from Nintendo Life give it a 3 out of 10, so I guess you could say it doesn't really hold up well. I don't know, I still love it. Now if you've watched my other videos, you may have heard me talk about how hard this game was in the past, but for number 5 I'm going with Rygar. This game was so hard, you start off with 3 life pellets, and when you lose them, you died. No continues without cheat code. No password system, that was it. You got one life, and you gotta play through this entire game that's super long, that people had to leave their Nintendos on overnight to play and beat, but when playing this for the original Nintendo and no internet connection and not knowing about a continue code, it's impossible to play through on one life. Originally released in the arcades in 1986, it was then ported to the NES in 1987. This is one of those few games where there was a serious difference between the arcade version and the home console version. The arcade version was more like a standard side-scrolling action title, and the NES version is an open-ended action-adventure game like Metroid. The NES version of Rygar did not allow for game saves. The complexity and difficulty of the game along with the puzzles to solve and special objects needed to progress required a great deal of time and unlike other complex adventure games at the time, the cartridge did not contain a battery nor a password feature. As a result, many players were forced to pause the game and leave their NES on overnight to resume playing the next day. Number 4 is actually a hidden gem in the NES collection and if you haven't played this one yet, definitely check it out. Eight Eyes for the NES is impossible. It's like kind of a Castlevania clone, but really, really hard. Enemies everywhere. You have a bird that you can send after people and attack them, but it was really challenging to control the bird, your special attacks, and your weapons while you're fighting people and trying to progress through the level all at the same time. It was extremely challenging, and Eight Eyes was a lot of fun, but man, without Game Genie, this game would have been impossible. The gameplay consists of eight levels, each set in the castle of one of the Dukes. At the completion of each level, Orin, the protagonist, receives a new sword. The player can choose to play each of the first seven castles in any order, though the boss at the end of each level is vulnerable to only one sword, similar to the Mega Man way. It's therefore easier to play the levels in a particular order, there are hints about the correct order hidden throughout the game, and only after each one is completed can the House of Ruth be played. Eight Eyes also features a cooperative mode in which one player controls Orin and the other controls Cutrus, the bird. In the single player mode, the player has limited control of both characters simultaneously, making the game significantly more difficult. Alright, we made it to my top three. Are you guys still with me? For number three, I'm going with Arknoid. Have you ever played Arknoid? It's kind of like an advanced version of Breakthrough slash Pong, where you control this ship and you shoot back and forth and hitting the ball against blocks. Sounds easy enough, right? And for the first three or four levels, it is pretty easy. Then it starts changing and gets a lot harder. Arkeloid is definitely one of the hardest games on the NES, and yes, it turns out there's a continue code for this one as well, but I didn't know about it back in the day, so... Trying to play this game through without a continue from start to finish is a damn near impossible task. Arknoid was another game that was an arcade that was ported to the NES in 1986. The home versions of the game were well received by critics. Computer Gaming World stated that Arknoid on the NES was the best arcade translation for the console that year, praising the graphics and play mechanics. 
Also, a little fun fact, if you don't recall, the NES version of Arknoid was originally packaged with what is considered one of the rarest of all NES controllers, the Voss controller. A small gray controller featuring one button, a small spinner with limited turn angle, an adjustment port, and the Toyota logo. While the game obviously can be played with the original NES controller, it's way more fun and accurate with the spinny controller. Alright, I'm down to number two on my list. And for number two, a lot of you would probably think this was my number one game, but there's one game harder than this. The original Ghosts and Goblins for the NES is my number two hardest game ever created. The controls were a little clumsy. It was hard moving Arthur around where you wanted him to and not being able to turn around mid-jump and having enemies appear everywhere, wherever you're going, they just come out of the ground and hit you. It was a lot of cheap hits and a lot of tough things that you needed to know beforehand before progressing through the screen, so it required a lot of replaying. And not only did you have to beat this game, but for the true ending, you had to actually play through it a second time and beat it a second time on an even harder mode. This game is damn near impossible on the NES, so major props to you guys out there who have actually completed this one. Another game that was actually ported from the arcade is Ghosts and Goblins. Sensing a trend with this is most of these games are actually former arcade games which would explain the difficulty level. And as I already stated, not only is this game hard, but once completing the game the first time, the player is forced to replay the entire game on a harder difficulty level in order to receive the game's true ending. The series has gained a reputation among gamers for its extremely high level of difficulty. Alright, we're down to my number one hardest NES game ever made that's actually good. But before I get there, I want to talk about a few honorable mentions real quick. First one I want to talk about is the original Contra. An excellent game all around and a true classic. Extremely challenging, but still manageable to beat it with three lives and using the continues to get to the end. Yes, there's the 30 lives code and I've considered that, but playing through the game, once you get good at it, you can make it through it. Another game I want to mention is the original Metroid. This game was extremely challenging with enemies taking away a lot of energy and especially at the beginning of the game before you get extra energy tanks, it was really hard to survive. But once you got those energy tanks, it made itself a little bit easier and it was definitely a beatable game. And the last honorable mention is one of my favorite games as well, Kid Icarus. Extremely challenging but similar to Metroid. As the game progressed and you got more energy, it was a little bit easier to actually beat the game. So. Didn't make my top 10, but again, a really good and challenging NES game. Alright, now we're actually at the number one hardest game for the NES ever created. Have you guys guessed it yet? I'm sure if you know the NES library fairly well, you would have guessed this one. Battletoads for the NES is my hardest NES game ever created that's actually worth playing. I've actually never made it past level 5 on this game. I have made it past the jetpack level, but it's really challenging to beat this game. Especially without using any of the provided warp zones or cheat codes, this game is extremely hard to beat from start to finish. The game was received mostly positive from critics upon release, with game rankings aggregate score at 73%, with one of the reviewers stating that they were mixed over the gameplay admitting that while accepting it's a very difficult game, the overall experience required a lot of patience and determination in order to progress. And in a negative retrospective review, Spike ranked the game's ending as the sixth biggest letdown in video game history. Man, at this point I'm kinda glad I never beat it. So there you have my top 10 hardest good NES games ever created. What do you guys think? Do you guys have any that I didn't mention in this list that should have been on it? Remember, they have to be a good game, and they have to be beatable, or at least somewhat beatable, without using cheat codes or passwords. You have to be able to beat the game from start to finish and have it be extremely hard. And I'm sure there's a ton of games that I haven't mentioned in this, so I'd love to hear from you what your hardest game for the NES was. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, let me know in the comments section what the hardest NES game you ever played was that's actually a good game. And if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe. And I'm also going to list my top 10 NES games ever created here. Thanks so much. I'll see you later.